Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Please be seated. So there's a common um, thread through our readings today, and it's a really, really important one. I think it's one that we all desperately, desperately need to hear. And that is the message of everyone. Everyone. And I know we spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out who's in, who's out, who are the Christians, who are not the Christians, who's one of us, who's one of them. And here's the good news. Here's the good, maybe good news? I don't know. We'll wait and see. The good news is we've been doing this for a really, really long time. And you get an idea of it even in Acts, right? So um, they're all together and they're like, um, Peter, why are you hanging out with them? Don't you know how like dirty and unclean those people are? And he's like, yeah, well, that's not really the message of the gospel, is it? And they're like, mm, is it, though? And he's like, no, no, it isn't. And then sometimes um, when you're a clergy person, someone will come to you and you're like, um, so I, I know that, like, you're into everyone being in church, but, like, did you not, those people over there are, like, not dressed the way they should be? And I'm like, yeah, so? And honestly, I can honestly say to you, that has literally never happened to me at St. Anne's. But the church that I served before, um, I'm just going to put it, and I love this church so much. But I'm going to put it this way. They, it, when the 1950s showed back up, they were ready. <laughs> they were ready for it. Um, and shortly before I'd gotten there, like within 10 years before I'd gotten there, they literally um, had a rule where women needed to be wearing dresses and men needed to be wearing a sport coat. And if you weren't, it went to the vestry, and they had a conversation with you. But it's okay, because like many, many hoity-toity country clubs, we had a sport coat in the back. So just in case, we're ready, right? And I would like to say that while that has changed, hasn't it? We're not so worried about what people are dressed um, in church. I Don't come the way that God created you. That's my rule. Um, but we do have other rules, don't we? And hopefully in the Episcopal Church we're getting pretty good about not. But how often are there rules of what it means to be a Christian, right? I remember um, I, um, I was raised in Episcopalian, but I attended a Roman Catholic school. And, um, and when I went to middle school, then my parents sent me to public school. And I remember there being honest conversations about how Catholics weren't Christians. And I was like, well... I don't know if you're aware of this, but they literally invented the Christian church. Like, they're it. Um, we splintered from them, but they're the originals. Heads up, Protestants are fairly recent when we come into, like, the story of history. Um, but we have these rules, right? What does it mean to be a Christian? Well, it means that um, you got to believe in the Trinity, and it means that you got to do this and you got to do this. And depending on which denomination, they've got different rules. Like um, some of them, you got to be believer's baptism. And some of them, well, even a believer's baptism in the wrong church isn't really a baptism, so we'll do it again. We got, we'll do it again. Oh, you can't remember being baptized? That's fine, we'll do it again. Oh, you weren't baptized in this church? That's fine, we'll do it again. Right? We have rules. Oh, and... Um, Make sure you voted for Trump if you want to be a Christian. Talk to Meg about that later. Or make sure you voted for this person because those are Christian values. The, have you ever heard of biblical values? They literally fit nothing in the Bible. I'm, I always am fascinated by a biblical marriage. I'm like, so a biblical marriage, um, you put the women out in their tents in the backyard. I'm not up for biblical marriage. Not up for it. But we have rules about what it means to be Christian, don't we? 
And we've done it since the beginning. Um, because humans are like that. We like to splinter into groups. And we like to decide who's in our group and who's not in our group. And we've been doing it since the beginning of time. And yet, Jesus is really explicit about what does it mean to be a Christian. Very, very explicit. Now, this is important because Jesus isn't explicit about much. Um, Jesus usually speaks in parables, and if somebody comes in like, Jesus, what do you mean by this? He's like, well, it's kind of like this. And they're like, no, no, that doesn't help me at all. I'm even more confused now. And he's like, oh, well, it's like this. And they're like, no, that just made it even worse. I have no clue what you're saying. So if Jesus is explicit about something, pay attention, because that doesn't happen often. So in the last moment with his friends, he's about to die. He knows what's going to happen. They kind of sort of think they might know, but they're not 100% sure. But this is his last time with his friends. And he says to them, I give you a new commandment. This is what it means to be one of my followers. This, folks, is what it means to be a Christian. He's very, very explicit. It means love one another as I have loved you. Love one another. That is how you, everyone will know that you're one of mine. If you have love for one another. He doesn't say anything about the Trinity. He doesn't say anything about baptism. He doesn't say anything about a political issue. None of that. What does he say? Love one another. Even if sometimes you don't want to. Even if they're not necessarily one of you. Like one of your group. Love one another. It doesn't matter if you have a tattoo. It doesn't matter if you're wearing a crucifix. It doesn't matter if you go to church every Sunday, but you should. Um, It doesn't matter any of that. It doesn't matter where you stand on abortion. It doesn't matter who you voted for for president. None of that matters. None of that is what it means to be a Christian. None of it. What matters is if we love one another, even when that's hard. You want to know why I think, even though Jesus is so explicit, why we struggle with it? Because it's so much harder. Let's be real. Can we be real for a second? I mean, I feel like you guys are used to my being real quite a bit. It's hard. It's easy to look at other people and be like, oh, mm, I got this checklist. And see, number 17, you're not quite there. So, yeah, you're not going to be one of us. Um, Oh, mm, that doesn't quite fit with our scenario, so mm, not going to work out. Have you ever noticed that we're really good about that with other people? Has anyone ever been through the checklist and be like, "Mm, clearly I didn't hit Christian? Huh. No, we don't do that, do we? We worry about who's in our group, right? And I think we do it because that's easier. I really, truly do. I think it's easier to decide who is in our group and who's not in our group. Instead of saying, this isn't about who's in my group. It's about how do I live in a way that proclaims Jesus Christ. And that's harder. Because Jesus is very explicit. What does it mean to be a Christian? Love one another as I have loved you. That's a difficult thing to do. Even in betrayal even when they're not like us, even when we disagree on the very things that are core to our being, we have to love anyway. Whew, that's a lot harder. That's a lot harder. But that's what I want us to hear. Because we're very, very good about defining what it means to be one of us, aren't we? I mean, even Episcopalians. I mean, we're pretty good about defining what it means to be an Episcopalian, right? In fact, sometimes we bicker about that. And if somebody comes to the Episcopal Church for the first time, they usually talk to me like, okay, so um, what do I have to do? You should come. Well, um, what about the Episcopal Church's teaching on this side or the other? Where do you stand on this side or the other? Huh. And guys, that's what it means to be a Christian. It means, hmm, well, 
what does it mean when you come face to face with God? Where do you stand on that? Because here's what it means to be a Christian. Loving one another, even if you don't agree. And that's hard to do. And that's what we are asked to do today. And I know that's really, really hard because we're living in a really tense time, aren't we? We're living in a divisive time. And it's hard. And to be perfectly honest, we've been, as humans, divisive through all time. You read Acts, right? We've read it. We know that humanity is divisive. And yet, I think we know more about it now um, because our community is a world community. And so where we used to divvy ourselves up by, like, tribe or family group, and then when we got bigger, we divided ourselves up by geographical location. And then as we got bigger, we decided that we were really into nations. And we've just gone up and up and up. I mean, here's the deal. We don't have geographical containment anymore. So what have we done? We've moved to ideological containment. My group is the group that agrees with me. And guys, that is the very opposite of Christian. The exact opposite of Christian is anything that contains you. Anything that contains you or any other one around you. Because Christianity and faith in God in general is about pushing you outside of any boundary or border that you possess. Out of any comfort zone that you're in, God's going boom. And we are pushed out of it. And so right now, where historically that has been based on geographical borders, it's not geographical borders anymore, is it? We don't do it that way. We do it on ideological things. Where do you stand on abortion? Where do you stand on gay marriage? Where do you stand on this, that? And what about universal health care? Where do you stand on that? These are the things that we divide ourselves about. Right? And you want me to stand up here and tell you what it means to be in and out, don't you? Because that's what churches do. All churches are guilty of this. All clergy are guilty of this. Because you want to know what? We're human. And we like our divisive borders too. Because you know what's uncomfortable? Knowing that some of you might disagree with me on something. That's like literally all of you, by the way. And that's a good thing, because it's important for me to be pushed out of my comfort zone, too. It's important for me to have you all come to me later and be like, okay, Meg, so sermon last week, ugh, couldn't go there with ya. That's good, because I need to be pushed out of my boundaries, too. And it's good if sometimes I say something and you go, ugh, ugh I don't know about that. That's good. Because we need that in our world. We need to know that everybody on our Facebook feed doesn't agree with us. We need to know that we can turn on a channel and they're not going to agree with us. Because that's how we grow. And you want to know how we're a Christian? Because growth is further. Being a Christian is even further than the growth. Being a Christian means you love them. Not only are you open to hearing it and experiencing it, you build a relationship and you love and you see God in that idea that is not yours. And that person who is so opposite of you that you can't even believe that they're alive. You're like, seriously? Like, do you have a brain? Right? You all have that moment, right? So here is what I'm telling you. It's not who's in and it's who's out. It is who are we keeping out and how do we go and follow them and expand our borders a little bit larger. And how do, how do we engage? And how do we find love? Because that, that is the mark of our Christian faith. Not loving the people that love us. Not loving the people that agree with us. But loving the people that make us scream. It's okay if you scream when you're home in a pillow. Let's stand together and say the words of the Nicene Creed. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.
eternal begotten of the Father.